All right. You know what? I've gone back and forth on how to approach this because this is something that's kind of important to me, but also I can't not talk about this because this is so dumb. But this is going to be more of a rant video. I tried writing out a script, tried organizing my thoughts. No, this is going to be a rant. Ruby Volume 9 does not know how to... Oh my gosh, the messaging in Ruby Volume 9 I think was accidentally done bad. I think. I don't know if they maliciously did this, but I need to get off my chest real quick. Why the hell is the answer in Ruby Volume 9 suicide? For those who don't know, and for those who haven't been paying attention to Ruby Volume 9, it's an entire season that's been delayed for like two years. That's completely filler. Nothing from the main story that we know happens. It all happens in this one condensed outside of the world of remnant story that they shoehorn in because they couldn't make it naturally happen, forcing Yang and Blake to get together as a couple, force Ruby to start dealing with her mental health issues because she's shown signs of it but never really actually done anything about it for the past who knows how many scenes now at this point, basically after season three. And after some psychological manipulation and torture from Neo, Ruby decides to actually kill herself. I wish I was joking. Let me explain. From this filler series, we're stuck in an Alice in Wonderland ripoff. And I like the idea they had behind it. I think they had some fun with the set designs. Look, I'm not against that. What I am against is how this entire se season, they're focusing on trying to get to the tree at the middle of the world. We're just going to call it the world tree, because screw it. But at the world tree, we are told that the Afterins can somehow be called to the tree. The memories are completely wiped. They're given a new purpose, new ideas, and they come out different after returning to the tree. Kind of think of reincarnation. The problem is, at the beginning of the season, we don't know this. We don't know the full extent of how it works, why it happens, or why it works. So we're just going along with the main cast, trying to figure out, okay, what the hell's going on here? Jean is 100% on the belief that it kills people that go to it. And honestly, I kind of have to agree with him to an extent at the beginning of the season, because again, we are told that when an Afterin, or the creatures of the Ever After, go to the tree... The memories are completely wiped. They're given a slightly different or the same body, but made better so that they can become who they need to become. Um, I'm sorry. That is death of the previous person because, again, our memories and our experiences are the majority and what most people claim is what makes us who we are. Personally, for me, I've lived through some things where if you see somebody die in front of you and not through a video on the internet, but in real life, that will affect you in ways that will change how you perceive life and how you see the rest of the world. At the same time, somebody who's never had to go through that kind of experience, they probably never have to deal with the same questions, anguish, or call to action I had when I first saw it as a kid. Again, that alone changes how people see the world, how you perceive things, and how things go about. So if I was reborn without my memories, I would potentially be similar I would still be different, though, because without the same experiences, the same life, I would be different. And that's kind of how the beginning of the season paints the ever after, and how the tree changes people. It's sure, they claim it's for the better. However, by the time that we get through the entire season, we're at the point where we don't really know. The cat keeps saying, oh, but you're not from this world, technically. So, the tree should not affect you the same way. But Jean's under the impression, doesn't matter, if you go to the tree, you die and you come back as something different. You have no memories of who you were before, you're just new. Which, in a way, yeah, that is death. Now, Ruby's been struggling with mental health, and is gone down a depressive spiral for this season. The big thing right here is... After everything happens, and after some really bad moments, and some mishandled PTSD, mishandled panic attacks and stuff, Ruby gets caught in a trap by Neo, whose powers have grown a lot. The season also ruins Neo, but we're not going to talk about that right now. And so, Neo, who can now create not only duplicates of the images, 
They could be images of different people perfectly replicating their voices. So now, as different people are fighting each other, you have all these fan favorites, and not so favorites, basically ganging up and beating up Ruby, saying the world would be better off without you. Neo puts a leaf from the Ever After tree in a cup of tea, and at the end keeps telling her, essentially, it feels like 2015 internet is kill yourself. That's the entire messaging in that entire thing to Ruby, from old friends who are dead, colleagues, and other people she knew. And right when Ruby's friends go into the trap and try to save her, or could save her, Ruby just looks at all of them and drinks the tea. And after drinking the tea, falls into the ground and goes to the tree. At this point in the series, they have not established what happens with rebirth or how the tree works. So, literally, going through mental anguish, psychological torment, her friends are there, instead of asking for help, instead of picking herself up, instead of saying, no, I will not kill myself, Ruby decides, I'm going to kill myself. And it's the following episode where they finally start showing what this rebirth looks like. Let this sink in real quick. This entire show has essentially painted the idea that going to the tree, returning to the tree, or being involved with it means that you're going to die. And you will be reborn as something different. All of a sudden, Ruby, with that kind of information, decides, Fuck it. I don't want to live anymore. I'm depressed. I'm struggling. Nobody's helping me. So she drinks the Kool-Aid and goes to the tree. After all of this, about... Five minutes into the next episode, they then show the Paper Pleasers, a group of people that Jean was trying to protect from killing themselves and going to the tree to become, to re be reborn. They go back to that area and all of a sudden, instead of being made out of paper, they're made out of gemstones and rocks. So now, sure, they're kind of the same people, supposedly. However, now... They can't be burned, and they cannot die in a flood because they're not made of paper anymore. However, although the personalities are similar, they don't have the memories of who they were before. And that's kind of concerning. What happens after that is, later on in this ep follow-up episode, which, yes, the last episode ends with Ruby killing herself. Uh, this follow-up episode later goes on, and they find Ruby at the tree when they start accepting, oh, maybe it's a good thing Ruby fucking killed herself. I disagree, but let's keep going. So at one point, they're at the tree. They see Ruby is formed into the tree of some kind. Like, there's essentially just a wood carving of her in the middle of the tree. And... At one point, they start freaking out, going, and Yang asks, what if she isn't the same person? What if she, when she comes out of the tree, she's not the same person who she used to be? And somebody else, I think it was Blake, just says, well, I think that's her choice to make. Now, one of my friends who is not very politically act active, he looked at that and he's like, wait, wait, wait. Are they going to transition Ruby from being a woman to a guy? Because, again, that entire setup and line delivery sounds like it's trans acceptance, which, here's the thing. I am all for art and media having acceptance for trans people. I think anybody, it's, th it's not my medium, it's not my messaging, and it's not my art piece. So I have no say in what gets put in it. So I support whatever you want as your message in art. My issue is... This trans acceptance isk, it feels like that to a lot of people who have asked about it. This line came after Ruby fucking committed suicide. You put a trans acceptance message a few minutes after a suicide as the answer for a character's problems. I don't know how to tell you how mismanaged this feels to me, because if you don't, if you're not aware... The trans community has a 41% suicide rate. I don't think it should, you should ever put suicide as the only option for a character minutes before, or the episode before, a trans positive and acceptance 
message. I am all for media going for trans acceptance. I am all for everything, everybody being accepted, everybody being represented with good written characters. But when you put the character who's supposedly going through a fake pseudo transition and hinting at it with a trans acceptance message, but their actions prior leading up to this involve suicide, I think we might have a bit of an issue here. I don't know how to say this any clearer. Putting suicide as the only option, suicide is the answer for two characters in the series, because Neo does the same thing as Ruby. And then putting a trans acceptance-like message right around the same time? Are you fucking kidding me? How can you mismanage this? Again, there is a level of acceptance that should be done, and media should be able to give positive messaging to people. Painting suicide is the only option as a positive message is not exactly what I call a good idea. So again, what the actual hell is this? How do you go from, and again, people may try to defend this messaging, and here's my issue with that. This series made it so it's a mystery and it's convoluted and you're unsure what happens when you go to the tree. This series went out of its way to paint a mystery to make sure that there was conflicting information, conflicting ideas about what happens when you go to the tree. The only concrete idea was your memories are wiped and you come out a new person. That is suicide. That is quite honestly suicide. Because if your memories are wiped and you get a new body and a new purpose in life... I really don't think that's anything besides suicide. I don't, like, it's fantasy suicide. Sure, there's reincarnation that happens, and Ruby goes undergoes a rebirth that changes literally nothing and resets her to what feels like her volume one self. Lovely, nothing happens. But what, by the time Ruby drank the tea, there was nothing concrete to support that... Going to the tree meant anything besides suicide. Again, this should not have been done this way. If they wanted to give the message that this is rebirth, you can change who you are without dying, then maybe they should have had the afterins and the crystals, like that whole paper pleaser thing, happen before Ruby fucking dies. But what do I know? May I'm not exactly the paragon of mental health, personally. I've attempted to kill myself multiple times, as a personal side note. But because of this, that's why this bothers me so much. There are people who are going to look at Ruby, the positive ball of energy, that has always been able to pull through hard times, and see that even she chooses suicide as an answer. This bothers me, because it's one thing to say that we need to change, we need to grow, and we need to become better people, and we should face our issues head on. You did not have to include a fake suicide, where in hindsight, yes, we know it's not suicide, but without seeing the episodes that follow up, you can be under the impression Ruby commits suicide and is no longer going to be in the show. I, again, this whole season is not only filler, it feels like a mess. I really wish something would be different about this. There's so many better ways to handle depression, anxiety, panic attacks, and actual mental health. And the fact that they have a fake suicide type rebirth system is what they're going for. It bothers me to no end. There's only so much I can forgive with bad writing or with mismanaging mental health as an actual talking point. But this just hurt. And for my fr I have friends that I rewatched season 9 with or volume 9, sorry. And they were so depressed watching this. They're normally more positive and happy than I am. They were excited and they're more forgiving of Ruby's writing than I am. But even they were picking up on how bad this felt. They were looking more depressed than I felt 
when I rewatched this entire season, knowing what happens, their blind reaction looked like they were going to cry at watching Ruby die. This, again, this is a series that Ruby was always the positive one to pull people out. And even Ruby committed suicide. How bleak of a fucking message do you need to have that even the most positive person in the world will commit suicide? If you wanted to give a story about, oh, sometimes even the positive uplifting people need help, maybe make sure that everybody around is getting help, that nobody is perfect, and that we're all broken, there are better ways to handle that storyline. There are better ways to tackle suicide and depression. There are better ways to show that even the most positive people in this world need help when they need it. But when your whole message involves a fake suicide, even if it doesn't turn into suicide, I can't, I don't know how to express how tone deaf it feels and how utterly garbage that presentation is that you decide that the best way to deal with depression is to involve a fake suicide as a gotcha moment of, oh, guess what? Turns out Ruby dies. Oh, wait, no, she didn't. This isn't Final Fantasy fucking four. I'm not here for a gotcha moment. I came to Ruby because the first few seasons were fun fights and lighthearted comedy. But after everything has happened with Ruby, it feels like there's no hope in this show. Even after they decided to make a filler arc to get to shoehorn in ideas and get things done. I can't. I don't see this. The show only shows the heroes losing battle after battle after battle. And now even Ruby loses a battle with mental health so badly she committed a fake suicide under the impression it was suicide because she didn't want to be who she was anymore. Again, there are so many better ways to handle this. And it hurts to watch what could have been a fantastically tackled message, what could have been a super good way of handling all of this. And it just falls flat. I, I really hope that whoever watches Ruby Volume 9 does not watch it when they're struggling with mental health. Because no matter what happens, I can only see bad things happening. I really hope that if you're struggling with mental health, you have friends and family that you can reach out to and that you're able to get the access to the resources you need. But I have to say, Ruby Volume 9 is the opposite thing you should engage with. It's the opposite, it's the worst kind of media to engage with when you're struggling with mental health. Because it really, it gives the answer that suicide is an option. Suicide is the answer. Until, oh, guess what? We subverted your expectations. It's not. It's not actual. It's not complete suicide. And this bothers me. I hate this so much. I really wish that the writers at Ruby would have considered for a minute what exactly that pacing shows. But I... I just don't know. Ruby's writing has never been fantastic. But I never came to Ruby for good writing. I came for comedy and action. But with how they're trying to be serious with their plotline, the story, and how everything's going, I just... It's like watching a sixth grader make edgy creative writing prompts for their creative writing class. Sure, it has good ideas. But the execution needs a lot of work. It needs a lot of revision. It has so many flaws that you can make an you can make video essays for hours explaining why even a few hours of content need a lot of revision. I'm this volume nine hurt because not only was a filler, 
it has such a mishandled message about mental health that I really, it leaves a bad taste in my mouth. And even worse, if we're going to escape all of what I've complained about so far, about the writing and how this works, at the very end of this season, they get to the point where they're leaving the Ever After. They're about to go into the war, into their world, back into Remnant. They give you a lore dump that nobody asked for. And then when they say, where will this portal take us? The answer they get is not where, but when. So now we not only have Team Ruby, who's gone through a full season of filler to establish essentially two things. One... Bumblebee is official in a shoehorned manner that they had to create an entire fake storm, a punder storm, to make it happen. And two, Ruby's mental health not being handled well at all. Those were my main takeaways. And now we have potentially that now that they're coming back into the season, which again, for those who forgot what volume, how volume 8 ends... Uh, the Elysian citizens, Ren, Nora, and everybody else, they're stuck in the middle of the desert in vacuo. We don't see any of them for Volume 9. We don't know what's going on. But now, potentially, the tree is taking them to when Team Ruby needs to go. What does when mean? Are they going to the past or the future? Or are they going into the quote-unquote present? This... This has me concerned for what they're going to do now. Because Ruby used to be fun, happy, uplifting. It was a comedy show. You could always laugh at no matter how dark it got, no matter how depressing it was, there was hope. But after Vol... Because Volume 3 ended on a hopeful message. Yes, things bad things happened. But there is always the fact that they could keep moving on. There's literally the opening for Volume 4, the song's... One of the song's lyrics that they use in that opening is, let's just live day by day. And yet, the messaging in Volume 9 doesn't even continue that message. So I don't know. I really don't know how to feel about all of this. I'm conflicted at the least. I'm disgusted. And I'm so disinterested in continuing with Ruby. I, I don't know. I wanted to like the show because I thought maybe it could get better. Because, yeah, season 5 was a flop. Nobody defends season 5. But even after season 5, there was hope that maybe it could get better. Maybe something could happen. But volume 8 decides, let's just have another follow beacon. It's literally not even a new trope. Except the fact that Salem makes a personal appearance, but it's the follow beacon all over again. It's like all of these writers can manage with Ruby as a series is have them lose, have them lose, have them lose. There are no victories. Because Volume 7 set up, oh, training arc, let's get better. And maybe something can be done for everything to fall. Volume 7 was a setup, Volume 8 was the fall and the loss. There was no victory. Tell me of a single victory Team Ruby had that had any sort of lasting impression. Oh, they saved Mystery Academy by Deus Ex Machina. Really? Mystery Academy? Nope, nobody remembers or cared about that. Because on the global scale, nothing happens. What significance did Mistral have? Atlas was the military of the world, essentially. And yet Atlas fell. Mistral was saved last minute because people from the White Fang decided not to follow the psychopath named Adam. Again, I... I just don't know. I really don't know. Nothing about this seems to be a lasting victory. Because everything they accomplished at Mistral essentially got swept away. They lost the relic from Mistral Academy... The headmaster turned on them, he died, so now there's going to be a power vacuum because apparently these schools control the entire country. And Beacon fell, Atlas fell, Vacu was the only city or city-state that stands, but Vacu was literally considered 
the beginning of Australia. It's a country of thieves, brigands. It's a country of criminals. So what, we're supposed to see the, we're supposed to expect that, oh, Atlas, the military might of the world, they lost. What the hell are a bunch of people who are fighting in the streets every day and brawling going to do? This is what Vacua is set up to be from the lore. So again, the hell is going to happen with the series? Where is it going to go? I don't know, but I am so disinterested. I really, I just don't know, man. So, I don't know. I'll cut it here. If you watched this far, listening to my rambling and my complaining, thank you. I, I know this is a serious topic. It's difficult. So, I hope I didn't ruin your day. But, again, thank you for your time. I do hope you have a wonderful day. If you need help, please do what you can to get the resources available. They are, they have never been easier to access. But, at the very least, I'm a degenerate. No one cares. And I will see you all whenever I see you next.